Hello friends, Tanya here for another Spellbinders video and this time we are going to feature the Happy Hour collection. This is a huge collection. There are many gorgeous die sets in this. We're going to start with the Sunset in a Glass die set and it creates this scene in a glass. I think this is so pretty. It came out first in the Weekender event this and um, one of the accessory die sets and um, you're going I'm going to assemble this orange and blue cardstock that represents a sunset over the water I've got the little sun die cut here which I die cut from some matte gold cardstock from the treasured cardstock collection Again, if you haven't picked that up and you love to work with specialty cardstocks, metallics, and glitters, you need to pick up the treasured cardstock collections. There's one for gold, one for silver, and one for rose gold. There are three sheets each of five different uh, kinds of cardstock, and um, it's only like nine bucks. It's a really good deal, and they are gorgeous. Really, honestly. If you like to work with that kind of paper, please go pick that up before they um, don't carry them anymore. I don't I don't know if it's a limited time thing or not, but you just never know. <laughs> so I've assembled the entire sunset scene and I even have a elliptical piece to sit on the top to represent the uh, top of a liquid filling a glass. And I really like how that <coughs> all came together. The actual glass fits um, perfectly over this scene. Uh, whoever designed this die set, mwah, perfect. Um, it was really easy to add glue along the edge on three sides of this um, scene and then just lay the glass right over the top of it. Just perfect. Now I have this little pick or stick that I'm, I put a couple little banners that are in this die set on and there's also a straw. I'm just going to um, add these to the scene and it looks cute now but oh my gosh when um, I add this to a project it's really going to pull it all together. Really cute turnout. Next we have the Olive Martinis die set. So we've got a martini glass and several accoutrements for that. And it's actually styled after a, um, oh, let me think. What is this called? Not coffee. Espresso martini. That's what it's called. So um, we've got a orange zest or orange peel here. I chose to do a lighter orange for the inside of the peel and that is represented by this cute little swirl. You could make these look like party streamers. Orange, lemon, lime, grapefruit peels, all of those things. Um, and then I took a darker orange and I'm adding those as the outside of the peel or zest. I love the little dimples on some of those pieces. Next, um, there's a die that cuts out three of the green parts of the olive and three of the pimento that you're going to put in the middle of these olives. And I just flipped all of these cute little olives over at a little glue and then add the red pimento piece to the back. It's really convenient that they have multiple die cuts on one die. So you're making three olives all at once. Very fun. Now that I have all of the pimentos added, look at that olive. It's got some great details. These are all exactly alike. They also have um, a sprig of flowers. So we've got the greenery and three little flower uh, adds add-ons pieces that we can add to this branch. I chose to do pink. You could do whatever color you want or use some of that specialty paper. Next we have an onion and we have just a sprig of herbs like rosemary. Next we're going to assemble our martini. Now this time I chose to, because I, I want to use some more of the add-on pieces, this creates a three different colored drink and we're going to do an espresso martini here. So I've got a nice deep 
uh, brown to represent the espresso. And then we have um, this shimmery piece of cardstock, which is white cardstock spritzed with, I think it was unraveled, and then uh, ink blended a little bit with some brown ink, like a uh, antique linen. And then we have the just spritzed with uh, unraveled, so it's a lighter color. So you can see that there's two levels of color plus the top of the, the liquid. And then we have these little die pieces that are supposed to represent espresso beans. So I'm just going to glue those to the top. And just like the other glass, this is so well designed. I'm adding just a little bit of glue to two sides of this triangle. And we will lay the glass right over the top of this. And it fits perfectly. No fussing. Very easy. You don't have to inlay it. It just lays right over the top. Now, there is also this um, pick. I'm not even sure what it's called, but it looks like a piece of, um, I don't know, really thin bamboo or something, but it makes a cute little sword to skewer your onions, your olives, whatever you're going to skewer on. And I bet you could even put that orange zest on it. It looks just adorable. Look at that. <laughs> There are all of the components of the olive martini. That one didn't take very long to assemble either. This one is called Tropical Flare. This is another one of the add-on dies. And it has, of course, a bunch of tropical stuff. Now let's start assembling some of these. We're going to start out with uh, the Flamingo. We've got three pieces for this and they all die cut at the same time. I did die cut them all from some pink cardstock and then used a Copic marker to color the legs and the beak black. I add just a little bit of glue behind the face of the flamingo and add the beak, adding just a couple dots of glue on the top of the legs and getting those lined up. And there you have an adorable flamingo. The black beak also colors the back of the eye. Next we have a couple of flowers. I'm just going to add some specialty gold cardstock to the centers of these. Those are die cuts also, the centers of the flowers. You could use gems or sequins to add the centers of those flowers too. Next we have a pair of cherries and it does cut two stems and two cherries on the dies at the same time. Again, I love it when they do multiples of things that you know you're going to use multiples on on your project. So I just join those at the top and use this little leaf to add that to the cherries. Look at that. So cute. Actually, I think I used two leaves because two is always better than one, right? <laughs> And then we're going to move on to the citrus wedge. It has um, the rind color. So I used a darker yellow. We're going to make a, a lime, no, a lemon <laughs> on this. I do ultimately make an orange, a lemon, and a lime slice. And it also has these sections. And I used a third color of yellow for this. You can use just two colors if you'd like, but this is what I decided to do, and I think it turned out so cute. There's also an umbrella. We'll add this to the, the stick and, um, die. Also has the uh, a landing place for the umbrella, so this all comes together just beautifully. And then we have three... Uh, foliage or leaves that go with this set. Next we have the boo, booze cocktails. This is all Halloween uh, themed or spooky themed. I love the skeleton hand. We have two skulls here and an eyeball. You can see two black ovals that are included in this die set. And those black ovals, you put these on the back of the skulls and it fills in the eyes and the nose perfectly. I love it when they think of these little details because otherwise I'd be trimming down little scraps of cardstock to fit behind these small die cuts. And look at that, just oh, so perfect. I love these little skulls. 
Then for this eyeball, I chose um, to cut these out in several different fun Halloween type colors. This one happens to be green and then there's a black pupil dye also. So you've got three circles that layer up together to make this adorable eyeball. Give you a close up of this. And the little black piece has a uh, hole cut out of the middle of it also. We've got these two reaching arms. And then we have these um, witch stockings with stripes. There are three or four pieces on this particular grouping. So I'm going to adhere this orange down to the green. And this is the first time I've assembled this. So um, forgive me, I did not assemble it exactly the way it needed to be assembled. The last little bit needs to reach all the way to the bottom. So I put it, a, I adhered it a little high. And you're gonna see this when I adhere the boots here. And they line up with the little uh, angled pieces at the bottom of these legs. So uh, the stripe doesn't come all the way down to the boots. We're going to do this again on the black one, and this time I'll place it correctly. <laughs> There's a little uh, like pantaloons piece that adds to the top of your uh, witch's legs. This fits perfectly on both of the glasses stems. So if you want to convert either of those glasses into um, witch's legs, you can do that. There is a little, uh, there are two little buckles that you can put on the witch's boots too. The die that cuts this cuts three buckles all at once, two for the boots and one for the witch's hat. Just adding little dabs of glue before I add these to the boots. And you can come up with all kinds of color combinations. Again, using the treasured cardstock gold metallics here. Um, I believe that was matte gold again. I'm just finding um, two buckles that look similar. And it really, I think two of the buckles are a little smaller and look more intentional for the boots. Um, and one is a little larger, which looks a little more intentional for the witch's hat. But honestly, it doesn't matter. You can use whichever ones you pull out of your stack. Then we have our witch's hat that has a contrasting color band. And we'll add our buckle on this. Oh, so cute. I love how easy these are to assemble and the wonderful details in these dies. Next, we have a pick, and I am going to add this cute bat to the top of the pick. There are also these bubble or bobble or circle. There are um, dies that are in graduated sizes. You can see those next to the skulls. I'm making one pick with the two sizes of skulls and an eyeball. I think that's adorable. There's so many ways you can use all of these elements. I, the, the possibilities are practically endless. And I'm also going to add these bubbles or bobbles or whatever you want them to be to this pick also. And you can do this pick with or without the bat. Or, hey, you can even add a skull to that. <laughs> I think that's adorable too. Look at those. Doesn't that just spark your creativity? Just want to go play? There's also a die that cuts three different styles or different uh, components of some drippy goo. And next we're going to move on to the Christmas cocktails add-ons. There are a bunch of fun festive pieces to this one. There's a peppermint stick and a peppermint um, candy, round peppermint candy. We have this adorable gingerbread man. There are two layers to this die. Could not be easier to assemble. There's a backer so that the frosting is a good contrasting color to the main body. And then we have the peppermint, the star candies. And they have the each of these the die cuts out the circle and the pinwheel component at the same time. So you can cut one out of red and one out of white, and then you get two complete peppermint rounds, peppermint star candies, with just two passes because all of your components are, are created. <clears throat> now this red 
cardstock. I spritzed with um, Yuletide Distress Mica Spray, and I love to pull that stuff out. And I've been using it on several of the cardstock components throughout this kit. I just uh, dig in and use what you have in your stash and those distress mica stains really are a wow factor look at that i did use brushed white cardstock no did i just use plain white cardstock i think i did as the other component of the star mints and the peppermint sticks and these get these fit together very easily also some of the best designed peppermint sticks i've seen yet Now that I have both peppermint sticks and star mints assembled, we're going to move on to the Santa hat. Again, it uh, you die cut the main hat body with one die, and then a separate die die cuts the hat band and the pom-pom. Next, we have another floral branch or berry branch. This one, um, I chose to use some gold berries or yellow berries. There are these very convenient spots to add your berries. And they add a background color for that little divot in the top of the berries that will show through the color of the branch. Next, there is a mistletoe die there is one backer die that die cuts the cluster that you're going to adhere your berries to and I did one with um, mica stain spray spritzed for the the individual berries and a non spritzed version for the backer so that the little holes that show through have a little more contrast and those just layer together to make a perfect little cluster of berries we have a couple of holly leaves here. I'll adhere two of those together and we'll add the cluster to that. Super easy and so cute. Oh, comes together so easily. Next, we're going to uh, assemble a little branch of florals. Just going to add a little glue to the back of this and add it to the flowering uh, greenery. Again, there are circles that you adhere the uh, flowers to, and the centers that are die cut will um, be backed by the green of the foliage. Now you could take an alcohol marker and color that another color if you wanted. And then there is a pine bow sprig and a present. We'll assemble this present, and there is a cute little bow um, that has three pieces for this. So we're going to adhere the um, package bow. First with the piece that uh, keeps the whole package together. And then the two components for the bow. The two rabbit ears and then the tails. They adhere to or they assemble so quick and easy. Look at that. Oh, it's so cute. Then we have this cute little um, cream poof that you can use as a hat for your gingerbread man or just as some whip topping in your drink or whatever you're going to adhere it to. Then this gorgeous bow, larger bow, you can add this to the stem of your flowers or in so many other uses. It, it's a really pretty bow. Then we have this Santa belt. I'm going to call it a Santa belt. I die cut it with some brushed black cardstock and some matte gold for the belt. And that's all of the components for the Christmas version. Next, we have a press plate. This one's called Classy Glasses. And there is a coordinating stencil to color in all of those glasses. Let's play with that better press plate first. I've laid the plate sideways on my better press platform and I'm going to ink it up with this Encore pigment ink pad that's in gold. Lots of inking there to make sure I get a good solid uh, coverage on that plate. And you can see that turned out lovely. I do go back and do the other end of that piece of cardstock to create a full sheet of that design. And now we're going to take a half sheet of black cardstock and glimmer foil this same design twice to create a full sheet of black on gold. I believe I used polished brass foil for this. That's what that looks like. 
and I'm just going to roughly line this up with the other half of the uh, or the other already foiled version. I'm trying to keep the rows of glasses even with each other. You don't have to. It's not a perfect uh, fit, but it's it still looks fantastic. And here is the reveal. I love all of those gorgeous glasses on there. Next, we're going to use the Better Press Cheers Sentiments plate. Now, this is another sentiment plate that um, does a bunch of sentiments. And then there's a coordinating die that cuts all of them out at once. Again, one of my favorite newer developments in the crafting field is sentiment dies and uh, foil plates, butter press plates, stamps, all of those things that do a bunch of sentiments at once and die cut them all at once because it's so much easier. There's no fiddly lining up, no worrying about it, um, getting out of alignment. Just this quick slap it on, run it through and or stamp it and uh, do the same with the die cutting, just making sure you line things up carefully. I even did the reverse foiling on some glossy black cardstock with that piece. And now we're going to take the coordinating die and line that up with the foiled, nope, this one's the better pressed image. I'll just use a couple pieces of Best Ever Craft Tape, and you can tell that these pieces have been used a few times. And here's a quick close-up of all of those different versions of the foiled or better pressed or reverse foiled sentiments. Next, we're going to take this single um, layered classy glasses stencil. It's one stencil, and it uh, allows you to add liquid in the side of, or on liquid in the insides of all of these glasses. And of course, I have to sneak some rainbows in here somewhere. I did take a pink, a red, and a, no, sorry, a pink, a yellow, and a blue to color these. And we're going to start with the yellow because that's the one that gets contaminated the most easily. And I'm putting that in the middle. And by overlapping the colors here, we will get um, five colors. We'll get pink, orange, yellow, green, and blue. And the colors I chose here, I believe, are Kitsch Flamingo, Lemonade Stand, and, um, no, Squeeze Lemonade. I don't know where I got Lemonade Stand. That would work too for a name. Yeah, Kitsch Flamingo, Squeeze Lemonade, and I think it's Salvage Patina is the blue that I chose. Those are some of my favorite colors to use for a pastel rainbow. We'll have that quick reveal here. Look at that. That's the twice better pressed um, pattern on a piece of five by seven watercolor cardstock. Just going to get that pressed firmly down into my Altenew sticky mat, which you can pick that up at the Spellbinders website also. Um, and it works great for holding stencils down, for holding individual die cuts. If you want to ink blend them and you don't want them moving around, it works for that. And if the stick becomes less, all you have to do is spritz it with some soapy water and wash it down and you have a sticky surface again it's just out of like photopolymer material just like your stamps I uh, here I am doing the second half and I usually well sometimes I show you the whole process sometimes I only show you part um, I thought it might be nice for you to see how long it takes to do the entire thing I'm again using a piece of product uh clear acetate just to cover the part that I'm not using. Next is the Perfect Touch Rectangles and Tag die set. These are A2 sized and they are graduating sizes down and they have this fun almost stitching detail and the smallest piece is a tag with some extra rows there. Awesome. Next we have the 3D embossing folder in lush leaves. I have a half sheet of cardstock that I'm laying in this folder. I'll run it through my platinum. And look at the detail in this embossed 
image. It is just stunning. Here's one that I took a piece of ink smushed cardstock, ran it through, and then used some gilding polish to add to the raised areas of the leaves. All right, it's time to actually start assembling a card. We're going to make a fun, a little bit spooky Halloweenish card. And we're going to start out with the martini from the Olive Martini die set. It has three layers for the liquid inside, and I'm using two different purples. I did one ink blend, well, one is ink blended with a slightly darker purple, and the, uh, or one blue purple, one red purple. I think it was wilted violet, and I don't remember the other one. Oh my gosh, seedless pre preserves? Yeah. Um, and then the top one is just spritzed with the distress spritz spray in uh, the purple. I don't remember what color that is either. Oh my gosh. Um, next we have these arms that are reaching out and these were spritzed, um, mica spritzed with the twisted citron on green cardstock and die cut. Here's a fun little spooky bat. We've got an orange eyeball and we have the drippy goo in red that we're going to line the rim of the glass with. The drippy goo was created by spritzing some Yuletide Distress Mica Stain on some red cardstock, and it really has a lot of shimmer and shine to it. Stunning combination. Just going to add all three pieces of those that drippy goo, and you wouldn't have to use all three. I just really wanted to have a complete drippy goo edge. We add the smaller of the skulls and we're going to add the witch's hat on the corner of this glass. Kind of looks like you ha you're drinking a uh, drink made out of human juice. Ooh, gross, <laughs> but so spooky fun. Uh, next, we're going to take this amazing skeleton hand. It is uh, such an awesome addition to this die set. Ugh, perfect. I add a little glue to the tips of those fingers and along the base of the hand. Next, we're going to pull out last year's pumpkin and ghosts backgrounds. This is a press plate, and I'm going to use it in the letterpress system here, or the better press system. I'm going to lay it down. This is a five by seven piece of watercolor cardstock, and I wasn't sure how I was going to use this, so I decide to better press both ends of this are both the whole piece of five by seven cardstock. And honestly, it fits on this about perfectly. It would also, it's all, just a little bigger. No, it fits right inside an A2 size if you turn it the other direction. I'm going to clean up some of that extra ink from the Encore uh, Gold ink pad, pigment ink pad, so I don't get that transferred onto to the uh, watercolor paper. And look at that. It does make a nice larger uh, piece. Next, we're going to take last year's spiderweb background. This is again, both of these pieces are available in the Spellbinder shop and they might even be on sale. Um, going to line this up with the top of this full half size sheet of cardstock. This is a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of cardstock. And you see a couple different versions of sil sil hmm, silver foil. Easy for me to say. Um, I'm taking, I think this is prism. Yes, prism on the black cardstock. Just going to line up the press plate with the uh, shims there. So it's not overlapping onto the part that's not going to get foiled. And then we'll repeat that process, lining the uh, edge of the press plate into or up to the previously foiled area and we'll foil that again with the same foil. I have speckled aura I believe it's called on the other side not aura prism gold the aura is the gold prism is the silver holographic uh, foil so we'll do that and here is the full the half sheet, the entire thing covered. And I, I, you know me, 
I love to make big pieces of cardstock that are patterned. Next, we're going to take the five by seven matting basics and we're going to die cut the largest die from that out of this cardstock. This is going to be on the front of our five by seven card. We're also going to pull in the cameo frames from the Peacock collection from last month. This frame is stunning. I love it. I have both the shadow die and the actual frame here, but I don't ultimately use the shadow die. That is for if you're going to add a layer behind your um, detailed frame, which I'm not doing. Um, next, I'm going to take that same spider web background and we're going to add uh, some color or some pattern to the inside of the card. Now I'm not going to direct it, do it directly on the card base. That would, um, that doesn't, I feel like that doesn't work very well. It uh, adds some odd uh, embossing to the back and you can't control it as well. Uh, it also wouldn't fit through your machine. Here you're seeing me make sure that it lines up correctly between the two images or, or passes. And then we're going to take another of, or that same die that we use for the front of the card, and we're gonna use that to die cut the inside of the card. Just getting any of the extra tape that I used to adhere that to the better press system off, because I don't want that showing through our white cardstock. This is 80 pound cardstock, just some white, 80 pound white cardstock. I adhere that using my Barely Art Precision Glue, and then we're going to use one of the sentiments we already foiled and die cut, just here for the booze. <laughs> That's such a fun, punny uh, sentiment. I just love it. Just going to adhere that in the upper portion. You're going to be able to write over that pattern very easily with a pen. Next, I'm adding some extra cardstock behind this pattern spiderweb panel and we'll adhere that to the front of our white A2, no, A7, 5x7 cardstock base. And we're going to take our cameo frame. I've die cut, or sorry, I've added extra cardstock behind that. I used some glitter cardstock for it. And our uh, oval that nests inside the frame that we die cut with the pumpkins and ghosts better press. Next we'll add our already assembled main image and you can see that I've layered two or three extra layers of the cardstock behind the stem of the glass to add a little extra stability and that was die cut from some brushed gold cardstock. No, brushed black cardstock. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm trying to center the whole image there. There is a little bit of that stem that extends past the oval die cut and I've taken several layers of scrap black cardstock, layered those together, and we'll tuck those under the base of that stem. We're going to take another sentiment from the Cheers sentiment set that we've already foiled and die cut and this one says drink up witches. I do have two or three extra layers of cardstock to stack behind this to give it a little more extra, a little more dimension and help it stand out against this fairly busy card front. Just lining that up. That is the completed front of our card and the completed inside of this card. That's card number one. Moving on to card number two, we're going to change seasons. This is the Lush Leaves um, embossing folder, 3D embossing folder, and I'm using some of the Golden Hour uh, Solar Paste. So this is the one that is a lighter co uh, color of gold, and I'm just using my finger to pick up small amounts of this paste and rubbing it on the raised portions of this gorgeous 3D embossing folder. I've already trimmed this down to fit on a five by seven piece of cardstock, or sorry, on a five by seven card base, because you know, that's my favorite size. And these uh, glasses are sized to fit either an A2 or a five by seven. And I really prefer five by seven. Next, I take a piece of 
uh, 80 pound Desert Storm cardstock and I'm using Unraveled and Flickering Candle Distress Mica Stains. These are a really cool combination. So we're taking warm and cool colors together to cre create this gorgeous uh, piece of colored or spritzed cardstock. It really feels very sunshiny to me. Next, we're going to take these fresh picked labels and tags, I think is what the name of this was. It's a layering or um, layering or nesting die set and cut that. And then we're using, these are four different sentiments I thought would work well with this. Cheers to, ba to hmm, cheers to, no. Cheers, babe. Cheers to you. Let's celebrate and happy new year. All four of those sentiments would work very well with this uh, design. I'm adhering our 3D embossed panel and then our background, our backdrop for this scene, the fresh picked label here. And I'm going to center that in the front of this card. Like I said, it just looks like warm sunshine and sand to me. And we're going to add the uh, sunset in a glass that I assembled at the beginning of this video. We'll add it at an angle. I think that is a little more fun and whimsical. Making sure that the stem adheres to the base of the card. And then we're going to take the sentiment. I did choose Cheers, Babe. I thought that was a pretty generic kind of opening to the sentiment. This could be um, for all kinds of different events, birthdays, celebrations of any kind, um, or just for the heck of it. Next, we're going to take some elements of the Tropical Flare die set. Again, I showed you how to assemble all of these at the beginning. Trimming off some of the stem here so that they'll fit nicely. We're just going to add some foliage to the base of this uh, glass stem. I think this will look really fun and um, vacation vibes I'm getting here. Tuck that under the glass stem. And one more leaf. Just trying to figure out my exact placement. It's fun to play around with where you want things to land. And we'll take one of these cute little white flowers. Add that to the base of the car, the stem and then we're going to use one of these peridot color essentials gems just going to pick one up with my tweezer here it has a nice pointy tip and i was using the tweezer anyway i love my reverse tweezers and my fine tip glue next we're going to add this cute little umbrella with one of the sentiments and this one is let's celebrate so we'll just add this uh, umbrella at an angle like it's resting on your desktop there or tabletop and glue the sentiment right over the top of that and that completes our second card for this collection for our third card we're going to throw in a few other things here we've got christmas greetings that's from um, one of the christmas collections from last month and we're going to die cut these from some matte gold and the shadow from some brushed white. I'm using my scout here to die cut those. Works in one pass. Love that. Or is that the brushed champagne gold? It's a very light, uh, yeah, that's the brushed gold from the gold treasured cardstock collection. Again, I love that collection of specialty card stocks. And I've been using the heck out of them. And they're really stretching a long ways. So if um, if you're interested in specialty card stock in gold, silver, or rose gold, those collections are pretty awesome. It's, I think, $9, $8.99 for 15 sheets and uh, three sheets of each color. Gorgeous. Next, we're going to play with those classy glasses. I have taken a piece of car wa uh, watercolor cardstock and used the gold Encore ink to press into this watercolor. And then I used different pinks and reds to ink blend the, um, the fillings in these glasses. 
like looks like a lovely set of uh, red wines and rosés here. We'll add our sending cheer to the front of the card. And now we're going to add some details to the inside. I have another panel that is uh, foiled, no, not foiled, pressed with uh, the Encore Gold ink and then ink blended with the same colors as the front of the card. And I am fussy cutting this piece, but you can see all of those other pieces were cut out using my brother scan and cut. It is a very simple technique. You just scan it and then tell it what to die cut. And it didn't recognize all of the glasses, which is one of the downsides of the brother scan and cut. It doesn't always capture all of the images that you want to die cut or to cut. Um, so you see a whole mess here. We're also going to use some sentiments from, of course, the Cheers Sentiments uh, Better Press and, uh, plate and die. I'm going to start out with the sentiment. We'll adhere that to the inside of this four bar card, which is three and a half by five inches. I like to mix up my different sizes of cards. We all know that. They're so fun. It's fun to add variety to the shapes and sizes of your cards. Um, and I like to mix it up and add some variety. We're going to add these uh, cut out little glasses to the inside to finish off this card. All right, that is all three of the cards that I created with this collection. I had a really good time assembling all of the different components and then creating these fun cards. Can't wait to play with it some more. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Why haven't you done that yet? <laughs> um, leave me a comment. Tell me what your favorite parts of this collection are and what visions you have to create with this collection. If you're interested in any of the product that I use today, check that description box below. There will be a visual link list that will show you all of the products that I used and some of the newer products will be in the actual description box. Until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.